And I'm glad that, John, that we have this opportunity to dialogue about these issues. Uh, and I'm glad that we ended on the point of resources and our own view on the curse or a blessing that these resources are going to be, uh, Kevin, that you raised as, as an issue. Now, we want to appeal to our colleagues that you're dealing with a different generation on a continent. And we want a new generational dialogue with yourselves. We're 60 years into the end of colonialism. So we are not saying that the structural deficiencies we have in Africa today are not as a, res uh, as a result of what happened with colonialism. We're saying that that happened. But we're saying over 60 years, we also have to hold our leaders accountable. We can't now blame it all on colonialism. We also have to say that, you know, Mobutu, who was there in the DRC, didn't build anything. He stole all of this money, and he did all of these things, and that is a fact. And we can't just blame the French for what happened with Mobutu. So we are prepared to say this, and we're prepared to have this conversation. But in having that conversation, we are saying that this is not an African problem alone. This is a global problem. And as we move forward in the world, I want to ask you a simple question about pluralism. You see, if you take pluralism in Canada alone, and if I say you have a wonderful, you've done a wonderful job of building pluralism in uh, Canada by accommodating differences, compromising, respecting each other, and you've done this with wonderful mechanisms. You know, I see in the airport all those nice slogans that you have and everywhere, and you know, it's nice slogans that you have. And I suspect that the gas and oil that you're getting from shale, which is going to make you enormously prosperous, because you have at least 100 years of reserves now, uh, together with your forestry and agriculture and all the rest of it, is going to make you an enormously wealthy nation. Similarly, with the Norwegians, who just found new deposits of oil in the Barents Sea, that are going to make them fabulously wealthy. Now, if we take pluralism one step further, and we say that let's look at Canada as a microcosm, and then look at the globe as a macrocosm, and we say that just as you Canadians, all of you, inhabit Canada and are prepared to share your resources, if I ask you whether, as a planet which we all inhabit, would you be prepared to share your gas and oil resources? That's the logic of pluralism, right? Are you prepared to accept that we are one planet, that we all own the resources of this planet collectively, that the gas and oil that sits here and the oil that sits in the Barren Sea and in the DRC and in Angola actually belong to all of us on the planet? Now, am I being idealistic? Am I thinking utopian? No, because now we have 7 billion people on the planet. And in exactly 13 years' time, we will have 8 billion people on the planet. That means that the problems that we face related to climate change, related to demographic movement of people and migration, related to trade, production, consumption, all of these things are global problems and they're going to continue to be global problems. The fact that Europe is in a financial crisis is not coincidental to problems in Europe alone. They're a factor of production and consumption in the global economy. The fact of oil extraction on the continent and the problems that we have is not a factor of Africa alone. It's a global problem. So here's the thing. We have sat down and we looked at our problems on the continent and we said, that the
there are 20 years of work that we've done and we've only mitigated conflict. We need to transform African societies. That problem that I presented earlier on cannot be resolved just by us changing our leadership on the continent and changing things on the continent. We need your help because in a global economy, your companies do business on that continent. The Chinese do business on that continent. And we need more responsible business. We need a new global framework for how we relate to each other. We need to extend your national pluralism to a global pluralism. We need to be able to build more cooperation at a global level so that our global negotiations on trade, on climate, and all the other things will not be in gridlock like they are today. Because 50 years from now, your children will inherit what you're going to leave to them. And I stand here today as somebody who's also like yourselves, and most of you here, we're in the center of power. We're the ones who are shaping this world. And we have to figure out what world we're going to shape. So what we've done is we've launched a new initiative called Global Peace. We've got President Marty Atisari, the former president of Finland, Nobel Peace Prize winner, together with Grasa Michel in, in Africa to co-chair this initiative called Global Peace. And we're hoping, John, we're going to be linking with the Global Center for Pluralism. The Turks have launched a Global Center for Justice. Bring all of these initiatives together. And what do we want to do in Global Peace? We want to bring like-minded presidents, ministers, CEOs of companies, CEOs of NGOs together to have a conversation about creating a better world, about putting in place a new social contract a new social contract that's basically going to say, we all inherit this planet together. And we're going to destroy it together, or we're going to be able to create a better world together. So we're not insulated. You're not going to close off Canada. You know, you're still building more airports and buying more airplanes, and you're still going to Petra. <laughs> and you still want to go to Serengeti and see the you know, beauty of Serengeti in Kenya and all the rest of it. So we're in this thing together. So we want to have that conversation. And then we brought three young people together in our organization, and we said to them, mobilize young people in their 20s. Why? Because they have unprecedented power today through social media. And we gave them an assignment. They already have 20 of them. They have brought young people who are doing amazing things around the world. And they brought them into a social network. And we want to bring thousands of them in a social network. And we want to say to these young people, tell us what world you want to see in the future. And then we want to say to those leaders that we're bringing together, this is the world they want to see. Help them shape that world today. Be responsible about what you do today. And I hope that all of you will be able to join us in that project. So my friend, Frank, if you can play that one minute video for us, uh, it'll give you an appreciation for what we're trying to do with Global Peace. I've been thinking. In 10 years' time, I'll be 20, and I might be in love. If I'm lucky, I'll be learning, keep the wheels turning, even drive my own car. In 10 years' time, I may live with room to move, running water, a roof above my head. I may be struggling to make ends meet, to buy milk and bread and those little pink sweets. I don't know about the leaders I'll have to follow, the rules they'll put in place. What will become of my human race? Do I also have to worry about the world you're leaving for me?